Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host Sana Makul with you at PTV World. In today's show, we will be discussing what is going on in the country in terms of the political situation, something which is a matter of concern for everyone. Uh, this is, of course, with reference to what the BTI has called for, uh, the Azadi March on the 25th of May in the federal capital. Um, and this, of course, comes amidst um, a lot of economic crisis the country is still uh, facing and, and the challenges that the new government is also dealing with. Um, and despite that, we've seen that the calls from the PTI leadership have been made for this Azadi March at the federal capital. Uh, there have been um, a, a lot of issues with regards to this march. We've also seen uh, that unfortunately in, in a raid, uh, Constable Kamal Ahmed was killed um, and he was shot uh, from the rooftop um, of a house uh, in a model town. And this, of course, is a matter of huge concern because it's not just the life of one person. Um, it is what uh, the potential of chaos uh, that the entire march carries um, and the PTI leadership um, with its stance um, on conspiracy, again, something that has been denied repeatedly, still going strong um, and calling out for the people to oust uh, what they refer to as the imported government. Um, and then again, also referring to armed institutions uh, to be neutral in the matter. Um, and then again, also referring other times uh, that uh, the aspect of staying neutral is not something that is uh, sanctioned by God. Uh, so this, of course, is, is creating a lot of problem and ruckus within the federal capital and all over the country as well. Um, and we're going to be, um, of course, seeing what actually develops uh, tomorrow and in the days to come. But it is a matter of huge concern for the people because, of course, uh, the, uh, the public at large is concerned. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, security that has been beefed up uh, in the federal capital and other areas of the country as well. Um, but in the larger context, this, of course, is affecting our economic uh, situation as well and the political uncertainty that has gripped the country for a couple of months now and that is going to be the focus of our show today and we're going to try and explore what really can be done with reference to the PTI um, and what sort of factors and concerns should the public uh, be thinking about for this and more I've been joined in the studios as always by Farooq Patafi and Raj Faisal and we've been joined online by Mr. Afnan Rahan who's Senator PMLN and we've also been joined by Mustafa Baloch, Leader PMLN. PPP. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being a part of the show. I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Afnanula. When we talk about uh, the current situation and, of course, the concerns um, of the long march uh, tomorrow, um, this, of course, is something um, that, that is quite troublesome in terms of the kind of situation that will develop. We've already lost one life, and there may be many others who are potentially at risk as well. Um, of course, the security has been beefed up, but again, the, the idea of a right to protest um, or a, a right to be able uh, to uh, uh, call out the government on various issues is being abused and misused by the PTI leadership uh, to perhaps uh, derail the process of democracy. Um, how do you think the government uh, will be able to respond um, if this particular uh, rally or march continues uh, to capture main areas in the federal capital or that they, um, as the, the plans seem to be, that if they do carry out a sit-in long enough, what will be the plan of action? Has the government developed a strategy uh, which involves various factors that may be possible? Yes, uh, I believe that uh, the, the current situation, uh, as you're explaining, is an unfortunate one, but it is something that we've tried our best to avoid. Uh, but we, due to the um, um, unelastic uh, position taken by Imran Khan Zab, uh, with regards to uh, the, the, the conspiracy that he explains, and then he, he, the demands that he put forward, there is very little room for the government to maneuver. Uh, he, he believes that uh, as long as he is the prime minister, everything is okay with the country, the country is going on the right track. But as soon as he is being ousted from power, everything about the country is, is, is going south. Uh, and, and, and because of that, he's come up with like a fake narrative to, to fool the people of Pakistan. And now uh, he's, he, he's going to march toward Islamabad. Now, keeping in, in mind the track, past track record of Imran Khan during the 2014 Dharnas, where PTV, PTV was attacked, where the Supreme Court and the Parliament was an, uh, an attacked, where, where civil disobedience movement was launched, uh, and where the whole capital was taken hostage by 126 days by the same party and the same leader. Uh, it is not 
I mean, it is. I, I don't believe that anything has changed. I mean, in, 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 in fact, I mean, if the, anything has changed, it has become worse with time Imran Khan's attitude towards democracy. So keeping all of his track record in mind, what his leaders have been announcing, uh, his second year leaders like Usman Dar and Sheikh Rashid and the rest of the crew, uh, they, they are continuously saying that there will, there will be bloodshed, there will be bloodshed. So it's, 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 it's only that, I mean, the government has to prevent this kind of, uh, get, uh, I mean, this, this, this kind of jalsa here in, 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 uh, in Islamabad because uh, I mean, God forbid. I mean, if they come in and there's, there is, things go right. as. Right. Uh, so, so, uh, Mr. Afnan, when you say that the government has to prevent this, does this mean that they will be prevented from entering the federal capital, or uh, that the situation will be prevented from escalating? They will be not allowed. They will be stopped from the border of Punjab. So they're going to be stopped from attack onwards. And 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 they, we have already launched a crackdown on 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 pti workers who we believe that had uh, that have nefarious designs so for instance one of a pti workers last night shot shot a police constable they shot a, po a police constable dead um, so so we know for a fact that the that imran khan has put together a plan where there is going to be a lot of blood in the streets so we have to then preempt it in punjab uh, the government in kp is of uh, pti so we can't prevent it preempt it over there but we're going to stop it, them from attack. We, we we can we don't mind if they want to do uh, if, if, if if they want to do another procession. But I mean, if if, if they want uh, to to attack Islamabad with weapons and with a nefarious design, then we there is no other thing that the government can do but to stop them. And that's what we are planning on doing. All right, uh, Mustafa Saab. Um, we've seen in the past as well that uh, whenever there has been any protest or sit-in or rally by any political party or any group, um, it has almost always ended in negotiations. There has been a party that has come forth um, and has talked about different issues and somehow or the other some compromise um, uh, has been achieved. Do you think that this is a possibility uh, that exists with the PTI as well? And if so, can this not happen uh, as a preventive measure uh, or a preemptive step um, rather than waiting for uh, the situation to get worse? See, uh, uh, firstly, if you want to uh, uh, go for a dialogue, you need the other person should be like, you know, uh, willing to listen. Khan Saab is uh, uh, currently in a position that he is uh, trying to, uh, you know, polarize the society. He's trying to divide the society just because of his uh, personal ego. I mean, he has been ousted from uh, the, uh, the post of prime minister just because his allies weren't satisfied with his performance. So he needs to understand, and there, this current government is just a month old. We have to fix the economy. We have to fix the, uh, you know, uh, the diplomatic ties which were uh, ruined by Khan's government. Currently, Bilawal Bhutto, you as you can see, he has been as a foreign minister. He has been working hard to, you know, rebuild all those uh, relationships which were, you know, uh, distorted during Khan's government. Be it China, be it U.S., or be it, you know, uh, uh, European countries. So currently, I guess uh, the only solution is that Imran Khan needs to understand that this is not the right time to create a chaos. He, if he wants to, if he feels that he's popular, if he feels that he can uh, be elected as a PM, then he should wait. He should wait. He, we waited almost three and a half years. We gave him chance. We gave him the chance to govern. Well, well, Senator, Senator of Afnan. Yeah, Senator, right. Senator Afnan, if we look at the, uh, you know, history of sit-ins and processions, of course, uh, they used to, once they used to take place at D Chok, and if we take the example of uh, PTI's previous uh, sit-in, it was uh, 2014, and that was, of course, uh, in the D Chok. And after that, of course, uh, you know, uh, Islamabad High Court, it has been, uh, you know, refusing anyone who wanted to uh, stage a sit-in there. And this time around, uh, PTI announced that they will be coming to Shirinagar Highway and they will protest there. Uh, should we be considering that it is an assumption by the current government that uh, they will not stop there and they will come to uh, Dichok and they will stage a sit-in once again at Dichok? And Afnan Sab, uh, since you were saying that they are going to st stop at the border of Islamabad, 
I just no noticed before coming here that there is an advance party which is already settled on the streets mm. or on the sidelines of the streets. So mm. what, what do you plan to do with them? I mean, if, if there are people who gather up, who, who are gathering uh, peacefully and they don't have any, you know, weapons or they, they're not trying to create a civil unrest kind of a situation, then we don't mind. I mean, uh, we, we uh, for the last 40, 45 days, uh, PTI has uh, done over a dozen uh, processions all over the country and we have not stopped them, although we were in power. Uh, so, so the people who, who who are here, they should not worry about anything as long as they're not going to create any civil unrest kind of a situation. Uh, but we know from intelligence reports, from PTI's past track record, uh, that last time when they came to Islamabad, they said they're not going to leave zero point and Apara. But, you know, once they got here, they just changed their mind and they moved towards Dechok. And then they said, we're going to stay at Dechok, but then they moved towards very close to the Prime Minister house. So it was almost like they, they attacked the Parliament, they attacked the Supreme Court and the PTV uh, 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 building as well. So and, and we have an audio of Imran Khan where he's saying that he, he's, he, he's congratulating Arif Alvi, who is the uh, missing president right now, that you have done a very good job by attacking PTV. Uh, building. Uh, so, so I mean, keeping all of these information in mind, keeping PTI's past track record, keeping the intelligence reports that we have gathered so far, we know that Ran Khan's design are nefarious. He wants blood on the street. So we have to stop them. Stop him. Right. And Afnan sir, not just that, perhaps, it's, it's also that even if we talk about unarmed peaceful civilians gathering um, for a protest, um, it's also um, the way that the, uh, a mob actually acts or behaves, it's different. And then also when the leadership is perhaps uh, calling for such charged sentiments uh, or for people to come out where history uh, is to be made or uh, for their independence or their azadi, then this is of course something um, uh, which uh, has the possibility of the situation getting out of control uh, perhaps even before you know it. Um, how would you be able to tackle that? I mean, we have uh, evolved uh, a multi-layered uh, security plan for Islamabad, um, where there is the paramilitary forces, the police and the army who, who will uh, hold different lines. And and uh, and we, we are confident that we'll be able to provide security to the residents of Islamabad. Um, and, and, and I agree with you that, uh, I mean, it, it is very easy uh, for a, a politically charged uh, uh, gathering uh, to be manipulated into doing uh, uh, civil unrest or taking things in their own hands. Um, so that, that is one of our major concerns and that is why we are, uh, I mean, once, once we got the intel reports and once what we uh, heard from the PTI leadership, especially from Usman Dar, from Ali Amin Gandapur, from Fawad Chaudhary and Sheikh Rashid, where they clearly mentioned there is going to be blood on the street, there is very little doubt in my mind that, I mean, they, 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 that they will not go violent. Uh, so so and that, that is primary reason why we are, stopping, we are stopping them because we don't have any other issue. I mean, if they, if, if their, if their protest was going to be non-violent, then we have no issue. But we know that yeah. this is not All what right. the plan is. Yeah, Mustafa Saab, Mustafa Saab, uh, being a journalist, of course, I have the liberty to meet around with my journalist friends, and of course, uh, uh, I have been hearing them as well. Uh, you know, I am constantly listening from my uh, journalist friends, a very well-placed journalist friends, and they believe that uh, in current government of the PDM, um, People's Party is making the smartest moves. It is deliberately keeping itself away from uh, whatever is going on on ground and because it wants to keep it safe for the next election. Is it true, sir? Uh, no, actually, this is totally a uh, uh, wrong perception because uh, People's Party has taken the ownership of this government and currently, even after meeting the PM, uh, Shehbaz Sharif Zadari Saab, uh, tried to, you know, give him uh, support that, uh, yes, we are standing with you and we have taken a decision, so we'll stand with you. So, uh, so far, uh, we are uh, with, uh, with, the, with, the, with the current government and we have... Uh, We've been uh, standing with them, and we are a coalition partner. And uh, the way uh, for Foreign Minister Bilawal Saab is, uh, you know, trying to take uh, charge uh, of uh, all those foreign policies which we want to, uh, you know, rebuild. So that shows that we are uh, very much with the government. 
-hmm. All right, um, Farooq, when we look at the Supreme Court ruling um, uh, back in 2019 uh, with reference to Faisal Bhatsir in 2017, yeah. it, it talks about how the right of assembly cannot be used to overthrow a lawful government. Um, yeah. and, and that is also something um, which perhaps has come in the forefront uh, considering the current situation. Do you think that this is something that, that can be used um, um, as a base on an argument by both the courts and the government uh, to pursue a crackdown against uh, this protest? Right, and that is a very good question, and that actually leads me to many other questions. But before I do that, let me uh, categorically condemn the broad day uh, murder of uh, uh, you know Constable Kamal. Uh, usually, whenever political parties fight, whenever there is tribalism, polarization, it is a common man on the street mm. that dies, and our law enforcement agencies, our police, our armored forces, other forces like rangers, they have been the reason why this country or, or the civilization in this country was saved from terrorism Absolutely. for the past 20 True. years. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, only, uh, you know, totally callous or stupid, uh, you know, people actually uh, kill their own benefactors or their own heroes. So this is a sad moment and we should actually think about that. Uh, now let us talk about uh, the state of affairs and where it is leading. Uh, as you pointed out about the judgment, I also remember another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the then Prime Minister, Shahid Khan Abbasi, actually had spoken how uh, they are going to handle future protests uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the federal capital. And they talked about uh, putting in gates and uh, you know, methods to actually control uh, any kind of protest so that nobody can actually make it impossible for movement in the federal capital. This has been going on since the uh, lawyers' movement, if you remember, 2006, 7, 8 onwards. And uh, since then, we have been actually facing this. We, mm -hmm. the residents of Islamabad, always go through hell mm -hmm. whenever there is some protest. My question, uh, first of all, is why is it that we haven't actually created kind of uh, SOPs where any protester can sit in a, in a corner where they have the access, but uh, elsewhere they cannot actually patronize the city. Then where are the gates for the red zone? And thirdly, uh, why is it that we haven't created a special force focusing on these matters in Islamabad? Because you remember that even as we speak, terrorism still is continuing in the country, and you cannot risk that kind of uh, situation erupting where peaceful protesters might be gathering, and they don't have weapons but they can be also attacked, mm. right? These are important questions, but in the end, I think uh, we all agree, despite the rhetoric and despite the shameful uh, use of violence uh, that we saw yesterday, which actually resulted in the murder of Constable uh, Kamal, uh, we do believe in the peaceful protest and peaceful mm. assembly, and I think that the honorable courts also never uh, took away that right from the people of Pakistan to protest. Of course, arteries mm. should not be closed. Uh, of course, uh, government should not be pressured to step down and people shouldn't be threatened. Violence shouldn't be used by the mm. protesters. But that doesn't mean that they don't have that right to protest. Exactly. Absolutely. <coughs> yes, Anna, uh, I wanted to mention as well yes. that you know uh, the uh, biggest victims of uh, all of this uh, political brawl are them children of uh, Kamal Ahmed. Uh, Constable Kamal Ahmed, because I was uh, just looking at their faces. They've just lost their world, the world obviously they saw in their father. And, so and, and not only the children, C Constable Kamal himself mm. was the victim, exactly. that's why he's dead. Exactly. Absolutely. And he Absolutely. was doing his job. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wanted to go towards, uh, 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 you know, uh, Afnan Saab. Uh, Afnan Saab, uh, <laughs> supposedly, let's see, you know, eventually P uh, PTI is ready to talk and a team from the PDM side goes to talk with them. Uh, what do you think their demands would be? Uh, would they be uh, asking for uh, an early election? And if they do, is it uh, undemocratic demand, sir? Uh, the demand is not undemocratic. It is their right uh, to protest as well. They can do a protest or a sit-in, that is also fine. Uh, to demand an early election is also, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what, but uh, but the problem again, as I've explained before, 
is is the intelligence reports that we have gathered and what the PTI leadership has been saying for the last few days. And they they have they have been mentioning again and again, and they have been threatening the the, the federal government, and they have been mentioning that there will be blood on the streets. Uh, and and this is like the senior PTI leadership. So keeping all of that in mind, and their past past track record. I mean, we are not. We are very confident that Imran Khan is not someone who is a democratic person. He is a fascist person. He will use the democratic values to get into Islamabad, and then he will show his actual face. Uh, what he has done in 2014 as well. So, so that is why we are countering them. Otherwise, we have no issue if there is going to be a peaceful protest anywhere in Pakistan. Right, uh, Mr. Afnan. Considering um, uh, the time that has gone since the ouster of the previous government um, and the way the economic situation has deteriorated, do you think that um, PTI's uh, supporters have increased or decreased? Because of course, there's this narrative uh, of the U.S. conspiracy as well, um, uh, which uh, the army institutions, the government keeps on denying, and that is something that has been used. But then again, we've seen that the economic situation uh, has not improved at the government's front. So, um, is is the PTI actually? Gaining more voters or losing them? I mean, it, 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 this is a, a normal thing. Would be that if, if a government is in power, they they tend to get uh, unpopular with time. This is just like a natural thing. Um, more, not in all the cases, but in most of the cases. Um, okay. So since PTI came out, out, out power, I mean, and then they develop, they they evolve this. Uh, narrative around like uh, the, the independence and and independent based on that letter that they, they that they claim that there was like a conspiracy against them. Uh, I believe that their popularity might have increased, uh, but it has not increased to a point where it can uh, they become the most popular uh, party in Pakistan. Because I mean, if you All remember right. the election 2018 elections, they, they were brought into power. I mean they. I believe that PTI is not a All party. Right, let me also rephrase it in, in, in the sense that do you think that the economic uh, burdens and challenges that the PTI government also faced have now been shifted to the current government and perhaps a lot of the people have forgotten that the PTI during the PTI's tenure this was the issue that existed uh, and uh, perhaps all of the blame is on the PMLN? Actually uh, to paraphrase this question uh, you know is it not true that uh, your party has somehow maneuvered yourself into a position where you have become the face of incumbency mm -hmm. rather than the one that were actually ruling for three and a half years. I think the jury is still out on that. Um, uh, I, I don't believe that we, uh, the people of Pakistan, are so so simple and so so so, so stupid that they will put the blame of PTI's tenure on us. Uh, there might be a few people who Imran Khan can fool into this, but by and large, I mean people have not forgotten. The promises made by PTI and the misgovernance that there was in the last uh, four years. Um, uh, we, I, I, I personally believe that PTI will not be able to win more than maybe 30 to 40 seats in National Assembly uh, in, 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 if there's an election held today. So, so they are very, very unpopular. Uh, if you look at it from like a like a national perspective, they might have some you know basis where they they have, they will perform better. Uh, but by and large, I mean, I, I mean, look at the 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 Jamaat ul Islam uh, sit-in in Karachi or uh, uh, procession in Peshawar, and then look at PMLN's uh, procession in different parts of the country. I mean, right. they were much bigger than what, what the your, guys your were. crowd pull is absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me actually go to Mustafa Balosha. Mustafa Balosha, particularly regarding your party. And one compliment to your party when it was in government la the last time. I remember that your party never tried to deplatform anybody, uh, especially when it came to journalists. Uh, it discontinued during PTI, and right now one one side of the uh, political spectrum is also accusing the incumbents. But your party never did that, and that that actually should go as a compliment. But regarding the current situation, you can talk about polarization. You can talk about everything else, but at this moment, what we are seeing is clash of two interpretations of national interest. And uh, on one side is, uh, you know, people who believe that you have to work with the international system. The other ones are that you'll have to stand up and you'll have to confront. Is uh, there a way, uh, a People's Party way, to reconcile the two? 
See, actually, Farooq, uh, 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 the, the narrative built by Imran Khan about foreign conspiracy and foreign intervention has been, uh, you know, has tried to pull, uh, you know, divide the society, and uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, quite scary if you, if you see. But point is uh, that uh, that the, the, all the democratic parties like PMLN, People's Party, and GUI, they have tried to build a counter narrative that whatever Khan was trying to, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, trying to interpret about uh, the foreign conspiracy was nothing but a farce thing, and he had nothing to say because he was. Uh, you know, uh, he, he actually lost from all those uh, parameters of uh, performances. So be it economic uh, performance or be it, for, uh, you know, global uh, relationships or be it uh, the democratic principles which Han used to rant about when he was in opposition. He didn't follow anything. So the point is, uh, the, 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 currently the people, the same people of Pakistan, have, uh, have 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 built a, a perception that whatever Khan said was just because he was losing from all the grounds and he needed uh, you know something to to stay relevant. But this no, no, I, hang on, I hang on, hang on. Uh, Balochep, I understand what you're saying, but uh, just because you don't agree with an interpretation, you cannot actually disown the people who might be supporting the other side. I mean, democracy gives a vote to even the people that totally disagree with you. Is it not true? No, I, I mean, I mean, obviously there there, there are people who have uh, this this perception and they, they 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 believe it that there was a conspiracy. But point is, uh, currently, Pakistan cannot uh, you know sustain these kind of uh, you know conflicting views in a, in, a, in a in a way that you know uh, we have uh, such challenges with. Uh, IMF, which 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 is currently giving us tough time, and we are facing a lot of challenges, uh, you know, domestically even. So this current government is, uh, you know, it's just like a new baby. You, you need to give it uh, to give it time, and time to sustain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mustafa, Mustafa Saab, uh, you know, if we look at the past, of course, uh, uh, former President uh, uh, Zardari, he has always been hailed and was considered as master of negotiations. And uh, even I, you know, fully endorse it that he is the only master of negotiations in <coughs> Pakistan. Uh, don't you think that he should have been playing his role, positive role in all this, uh, you know, uh, conflict, political conflict, which is going on right now? And uh, of course, I will, uh, you know, hear from you that it was impossible to uh, get Imran Khan on the table of talks, but you had many people around Imran Khan you could, uh, you know, tier two or tier three, who could influence Imran Khan. And uh, maybe, I think uh, if uh, former President Zardari wanted to do it, it could have been very easy for him to get to uh, tier two, tier three, and eventually Imran Khan to bring on the table and not bring in the fight on the roads rather than talking on the table, sir. You could use uh, PMLQ as well. I, I mean, uh, Chaudhary Pravez Elahi. I, I hope that it is not longer than the question I asked, but this is the gist of my question. Mm. Uh, that why can't your party actually play uh, the role of uh, a reconciler? Actually, Farooq uh, Zadari Saab has been playing a pivotal role in this, and he recently he had talks with uh, uh, you know PMLQ about uh, this the situation in Punjab. So we we would be the last person to you know leave this government like this. We want this government to perform because of, not because of us, because of Pakistan. Currently, we are taking all this burden because we want to stabilize the situation of Pakistan. We are not being selfish. On the other hand, Imran Khan is being selfish. He's being utter selfish. And uh, to, to build, bring him on table is, 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 is next to impossible. You know, he, he can talk with Taliban, but he cannot talk with his own people. He, he cannot talk with the, the uh, political parties of his own country. So that's the dilemma. Mm. Right. Yeah. And um, I'll just go to Mr. Afnan as well and just talk a quick about. Question. Yes, you can ask that later, Faisal. Yeah. When we talk about the uh, issue Remember of the who economy. Remember, is the boss. Yeah, yes. We know. <laughs> um, when, uh, when we talk about the economic situation earlier, what, uh, what we were referring to, of course, with the, with the government being able to face these challenges or doing something about it, do you think that the, uh, the uncertainty that has been there with regards to the economic uh, measures that the government needs to take um, uh, will uh, be sort of addressed? Um, will this rally? or this protest by the BTI will be 
acting as a catalyst perhaps for the government to be able to take quick decisions and tough decisions regarding the economy? I mean, we, we have been planning uh, the budget for some time and we, we, we have been working on uh, providing relief to the masses as well. Um, uh, and, and, and you can see that there have been multiple rounds that have taken place with the IMF as well. So, so uh, our economic team is working day and night on ensuring that uh, we, we don't put any more burden on the, uh, on the people of Pakistan. And, and, and keeping that in mind, we also need to actually um, take the economy forward. And, and for that, we need to restart the IMF program. And, and we're working on that as well. And we also have to give a good budget, as a people-friendly budget as well. So all of these tasks are being done at the same time. Right, I understand that. My only question is, do you think that the situation that uh, we are currently in with reference to the BTI uh, will factor in in the pace of your decision making? I mean, what PDI is trying to do is to basically sabotage the, the economic recovery of Pakistan. And, 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 and they are trying to basically, you know, slow it down or, 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 or kill it altogether. And we know that and, and, and one of the, and they know that if we are able to deliver on the economic front, the PTI will look very, very, it will look very badly on, on Iran Khan and PTI. And that is what, what they're trying to do. So we have, we have to basically, you know, tackle two issues at the same time, stop Iran Khan and fix the economy as well. But I believe that in the next six to eight months, it's going to be difficult. There are going, going to be difficult decisions. There will be inflation as well. But after that, there is good time to come. <clears throat> yeah, Afnan Saab, uh, a very interesting question, which is just popping up right now uh, in my head. And that is, since the day one of uh, PDM's government, of course, uh, People's Party has, you know, they took uh, foreign ministry. And we could only see them highlighting the foreign policy of Pakistan. And uh, they, I mean, uh, Bilawal visit to America, what we saw that he endorsed the former prime minister when he came to a question on Russia's trip. And he endorsed it and he uh, defended, it, defended it as well. And no, he said, no, no, I, th I think not endorsed that, defended it. Defended but, it. Yeah. Uh, I think he's of the view that uh, he himself, uh, uh, you know, endorsed the independent foreign policy of Pakistan. This is what uh, he believes in. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask, sir, uh, are they, uh, you know, towing people's parties' uh, foreign policy or PDM's foreign policy or it is Pakistan as a state, its foreign policy, sir? I believe that the, the, the foreign policy that he is presenting forward is, 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 the, is the foreign policy of Pakistan, uh, a policy which is devised uh, by taking in, uh, the advice from the coalition partners as well. And uh, I also believe that uh, the way he has presented himself in the international arena, it has, it has brought good repute to Pakistan. I mean, you can see that there are professional people who are dealing with these issues rather than you know what is happening in the last four years where there were amateurs uh, who were just playing around with the foreign policy and the economy of Pakistan. Uh, so, so uh, I mean, whatever the government is doing is taking into, uh, it, it, it's doing a lot of, you know, uh, doing a lot of advisory counseling and taking into account what the coalition partners are, are saying and, and then devising a, the policy for the economy and for the foreign policy as well. And uh, I believe that Bilawal is representing the state of Pakistan very well. Right. Uh, 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 Afnan Saab, uh, there's a question regarding uh, the optics. Uh, the way your parties have actually come together is on one side very heartening for anybody who believes in democracy. Exactly. That so, so many parties can work together. But on the other side, there is this accusation or this image. Uh, and uh, remember, there's uh, a very interesting uh, pejorative that is used uh, in America and Europe elsewhere as well. Uh, they call it uniparty, that all the parties, despite uh, you know, their divides, are actually representing one interest. So don't you think that you're coming together and defending each other all the time, um, while it will enhance the, the stature of the government, but it will undermine the fact that you have different parties. constituencies, mm -hmm. and PTI will then say that they actually represent only one interest? 
I mean, from political perspective, you might be you you have a point there that I mean, P P P and P M L N coming together might give an opportunity for uh, might give an opportunity to P T I uh, to announce its clouds. But I I I don't I don't see that happening. It's primarily because people will not forget uh, the last four years of uh, of 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 uh, you know uh, of P T I's misgovernance. And 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 so if if it was a new party without any past uh, performances, then it would have your your point would have been, uh, uh, may, I mean, th that would have actually made a lot of difference. All uh, right, um, uh, Musafa Saab, um, uh, uh, the previous Prime Minister Imran Khan keeps talking about the concept of neutrality with reference to the armed institutions and he has been raising this is issue time and again uh, despite uh, repeated warnings by the ISPR as well, despite uh, statements uh, from the armed institutions of the fact that they are not involved in the decision making, will not be um, a part of the political decision making process in Pakistan ever. Um, and this of course uh, is a matter of huge concern considering the kind of narrative that has been started by the PTI since uh, the ouster of the previous Prime Minister. Um, uh, as, uh, uh, as previously understood and as talked about, uh, this was of course something that uh, we were praising, the fact that we do not want uh, the institutions to be part of the political decision making. That is what the entire process of democracy or the fight for democracy was all about. Why is it that now the concept of neutrality has suddenly become a, such a big nuisance and, and perhaps uh, misunderstood by uh, people at large and then used to uh, destroy the sanctity of the armed institutions? And then when we talk about consequences, there has been repeated warnings given. However, we've seen that he continues to carry on uh, making these statements in various uh, rallies and on different platforms, uh, perhaps with impurity. Well, actually, uh, Khan's problem uh, is that he is habitual to drag all the institutions in his uh, own mess. And uh, currently, uh, the, the state of neutrality is uh, being seen, and which is good. Actually, you know, uh, in, in, in any democracy, institutions should, should remain neutral. And we have never dragged institutions in our matter. But Khan has been doing this on and off. And first, you can see his statements were, uh, you know, that you know there is nothing as such called neutrality, and they should take uh, one side. And now he has been saying that uh, they shouldn't be neutral. So I mean, uh, he's we we know he's his master of U-turns, but point is, uh, such a big U-turn that was uh, unexpected from uh, Mr. Khan. Right, right uh, Musafa uh, Let me also ask you about the sanctity and importance or independence of institutions. And I'm not going to talk about the military institutions. Let me talk about the courts and other mm -hmm. institutions of that sort. Um, now, we saw that when the previous government was being removed through a vote of no confidence, and the courts actually stepped in your party and PMLN actually upheld the decision uh, because they were acting to support or uh, save democracy and, and institutionalism. But later on, when recently there has been judicial activism, we have seen some comments coming from this side as well, challenging the courts or their decisions. Uh, do you, can, are you in a position to uh, uncategorically actually state this, uh, that you are going to pledge support for institutions no matter what, and that they should stay out of politics and they should do their job? Because in the end, when we politicize the institutions, it makes it difficult for them to build themselves and to actually uh, serve the nation. Farooq, uh, as far as People's Party is concerned, we have been victim of uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, such decisions, be it uh, the, uh, the the cruel the decision of uh, hanging Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, former prime minister. But we never uh, you know spoke a word against our honourable uh, courts. And be it any uh, like uh, uh, former minister, uh, prime minister Yusuf Rajagilani was ousted uh, at the owner of courts, but we, you know, uh, uh, stood by the decision and we, uh, we 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 brought a new prime minister from the same parliament. So we have uh, never, uh, you know. So uh, so uh, did PMLN uh, as well, uh, because Mian Bashiri was oust, uh, ousted uh, by the exactly, courts. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. They have also shown uh, the same uh, political maturity. When Mia Saab was, uh, you know, ousted uh, from the PM ship, and uh, uh, they, they they brought in Shahid Hakan Abbasi, so that's uh, that's kind of maturity which Pakistan needs, 
and uh, on the other hand if you see imran khan uh, uh, once he's gone he 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 didn't even let uh, shah mahmood qureshi the poor guy to just you know get uh, uh, a, a, a vote vote of uh, vote for the prime minister so he he's he's such a you know uh, selfish person so he thinks of his own he he doesn't want any other person be it from his own party or from the other party to be a prime minister Right, we're almost out of time, so I'll take my last question uh, from uh, Mr. Afnan. Um, it's not just perhaps institutions that Imran Khan has been targeting. He's also been targeting individuals. Uh, and he's also uh, said and made some remarks with reference to Maryam Nawaz, which have been uh, quite uh, unacceptable. Uh, and something that I personally also, as a woman, take offense to. And this is something that perhaps needs to be... Um, talked about more um, the kind of influence uh, that uh, Imran Khan and the way he talks about people um, individuals uh, the way he mocks them um, or speaks about uh, uh, different genders and his relationship with different genders and the respect that he gives to them um, something that has an influence on on, on the large uh, youth that was supposedly uh, part of his uh, following that continues to be um, they are part of our next generation and they are being influenced by such talks as well is there perhaps uh, no real um, way or a tangible action that can be taken with regards to spreading of such uh, perspectives? It is unfortunate what um, Imran Khan has said about Mahim Nawaz Sahiba in his speech in, in Multan. And, uh, Absolutely. Um, but this is not the first time that he has done this. And he has done it multiple times. And you know, Imran Khan talks about West and all that. If he, if he was in the West, he would be put in the sexual offender list uh, because he has not done this once, but many times. I mean, he, but why not he, here as well? I mean, I think we don't have a list so far, but if there is one, it should be there. And but I, I doubt that it makes any difference to him. I mean, he he has evolved uh, such a personality where he he can basically come up with misogynist comments and he can he can uh, say things which normally you know would not go very well in our society but he keeps getting away with it and and and, and that is very unfortunate um it just shows that what is actual what what is actually going on in his mind and the kind of person that he is um, and i agree with right, but isn't that, it up to you to stop him from keep getting away from this i mean we are going to we are stopping imran khan i mean if you look at look at, look at the existing situation um I, I believe that there are going to be cases made against Imran Khan on, on different things uh, that he has done in the past. And this might be one thing that will come back to haunt him as well. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Afnan um, and Mr. Mustafa Baloch, for joining us and being a part of the debate. Um, we're going to hopefully um, see uh, a better situation um, and a situation that is under control, a situation which uh, sees a peaceful protest as is the right of the people um, and not something that violates the fundamental rights of the people. Farukh is shaking his head as I say this, but that is, of course, the hope. We'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching the debate.